rollout solar array in place. Meantime, Shane Kimbrough is pre-positioning equipment along the mast canister at the very base of the P6 solar array where a mod kit or mounting bracket is uh, set up and was installed on a prior EVA to which uh, this second uh, solar array will be attached on the opposite side of where the 2B rollout solar array was attached uh, during Sunday's spacewalk. Jenny, I'm in position, um, Charlie 12, and I'm ready for settings. Copy, confirm that you've attached your adjustable to the ARD tether point. Uh, no, not yet, Jenny, it's a good catch. Uh, better position. We have about a minute and 30 seconds till sunrise. This is Mission Control continuing uh, to take questions in on hashtag AskNASA from our viewers. Twitter uh, user asks, how do the astronauts get their tools out of the tool bag while spacewalking as they might drift away in space? Uh, all these tools are in a device called a tool caddy, which is essentially a tool bag that they carry along with them and which is double tethered uh, to uh, various positions along the paths of their movements on the outside of the International Space Station. They sen simply reach into the bag, pull out a tool, make sure it's uh, securely tethered in place so it doesn't float away, and then use those tools as necessary. Kate on Twitter asks, do all the astronauts train for solar array EVAs or spacewalks like Toma and Shane are conducting? The answer, not exactly. Uh, the uh, all crews, flying on the International Space Station have uh, crew members who are trained in generic tasks, contingency tasks, in the event certain critical hardware is broken and must be replaced, and then mission-specific tasks, such as the ones we're watching for this solar array work, they are specifically trained for by crew members on the assumption that they're going to be aboard the International Space Station at the time that hardware arrives in orbit. Shane, you can verify that the strut MLI is clear for our ROSA install, and then we'll have you release your fair lead, pick up your green hook, and head back inboard. Hey, the MLI is you 
happy, Tomas. Let me know when you're ready for settings to drive the stop block bolt to torque. I'm ready. Bravo 1, clockwise 2. Bravo 1, clockwise 2. Then you have eleven point nine on the floor, good green light, and four point two turns. Copy Tama, eleven point nine torque, green light four point two on the turns. The stop block bolt is driven to torque. You can store your PGT. A firm, when you are at tomorrow. Go ahead, Shane. Just up. Nicely done. Agreed, nicely done, Toma. When you're at the crew lock bag, you can stow the adjustable equipment tether with the ARDs, retrieve the scoop with the long duration tie down tether, and we'll also be doing a socket swap on the green PGT. The anti-rotation devices have now been released by Pesquet. Next up, braking torque on the final bolts holding the rollout solar array on the flight support equipment on the truss of the station. There's a good view of uh, Toma Pesquet at the uh, flight support equipment. Uh, at the top of the screen is the second of the uh, rollout solar arrays uh, to be installed on the P6 truss of the International Space Station. This one for the 4B power channel, matching uh, the 2B channel array that was installed uh, during the last spacewalk this past Sunday. Just before we uh, lost our signal during a handover between satellites on the tracking and data relay satellite system, the International Space Station uh, flying into an orbital sunrise, about to cross uh, the coastline uh, at the border between California and Oregon, moving from southwest to northeast, soon to cross the Pacific Northwest. Back to the bag. Copy, Tama. We're back with you after a handover. I copy that you are retrieving the scoop from the crew lock bag. Can you confirm whether you stowed the adjustable? Yes, correct. Stowed and retrieved. Copy all. The uh, rollout solar array technology. Uh, being installed on the space station to augment the power capability of the complex is uh, going to be used uh, for the Gateway program. The Gateway being an outpost uh, that uh, will be developed and uh, orbited uh, to fly, uh, to orbit the moon, to provide uh, support for the human uh, return to the lunar surface and a staging point for deep space exploration. It's a critical component of the Artemis program. You can see in this graphic uh, the current legacy or heritage ISS solar array wings and their vast size, the comparative uh, size of the 
rollouts solar arrays being installed on the International Space Station to provide an additional 120 kilowatts of power for station systems, payloads, and new modules to be launched to the complex. And on the far right, what the uh, power and propulsion element for Gateway, that uh, solar array wing is going to look like for the hardware that will be launched uh, to orbit the moon, serving as a way station for deep space exploration. Yeah, I have my great notes coming in. Copy, Shane. You'll be translating to the FSE grapple tower. Just coordinate with Tomal when moving on the FSE. Two hundred fifty five miles over Idaho, Toma Pesquet is at the uh flight support equipment. Uh, he'll be uh, breaking torque on the final set of bolts holding the solar array that you see at the top of your screen to that structure. PGT, good pull test. Copy, Toma. We'll now be breaking torque on the Irosa FSE bolts, Charlie 12 and Charlie 11. We'll be starting with Charlie 12. Copy, Charlie 12. Okay, Shane, let me know when you've uh, stopped translating. Um, you're coming later? I'm coming later. Turn on right now. Here you go, I'm clearing your tether. Are you on the FSC? I am. I'm a right now. Shane Kimbrough now joining Pesquet at the flight support equipment. 
to uh, lend a hand as uh, Pesquet uh, is about to uh, work uh, with his pistol grip tool to release uh, a final pair of bolts holding uh, the uh, solar array that you see at the very top of your screen to this flight support equipment. The uh, two arrays, this first pair of arrays were launched in the uh, trunk of the SpaceX Cargo Dragon vehicle a few weeks ago. This flight support equipment will be uh, robotically detached from its uh, location that you see on the truss and uh, reinstalled in the trunk of Dragon. SpaceX uh, is scheduled to uh, undock the uh, Cargo Dragon vehicle on July 6th and deorbit uh, for a splashdown in the Atlantic Ocean the following day, bringing home scientific experiments and other cargo. The trunk of Dragon will be uh, jettisoned and disposed of with that flight support equipment uh, prior to the reentry of the Dragon for its uh, parachute-assisted splashdown in the uh, Atlantic Ocean. Breaking torque, and your settings are Bravo 3, counter 2. Um, up to half a breaking torque, Bravo 3, counter 2. Hey, firm. And Shane, understand you're holding in position. I'll have big picture words for both of you once Toma breaks torque on Charlie 12. Shane, 
you can retrieve the square scoop from the crew lock bag and stow it on your mini workstation, and I'll also get a confirmation of a green light on your HECA when you're ready. This is Mission Control Houston. We're approaching the one hour, 30 minute mark into uh, today's spacewalk by Pesquet and Kimbrough. Affirmed. The crew uh, just about on the timeline. Pesquet is uh, releasing uh, the last of the bolts holding uh, the IROSA or ISS rollout solar array in place on the flight support equipment being assisted by Shane Kimbrough. You can see him using a pistol grip tool. Once uh, these bolts are released, Pesquet then will set up uh, a portable foot restraint at the end of the Canadarm2 robotic arm that he will plant his feet in for a ride over to the P6 truss while he holds the array for a handoff to Kimbro in the first uh, phase of the actual installation process on a mounting bracket at the base of the mast canister at the base of the P6 uh, truss structure. You can stow your PGT and translate to Charlie 12. EV2 has a green light on the hooker. Copy, Shane. And Shane, we're also going to take a power cycle on the HECA as well. You want to get the scoop, you said? Affirm, you're retrieving the scoop and stowing it on your mini workstation. JDM ready for uh, settings on uh, Charlie 12. Bravo 3, counter 3. Bravo 3, counter 3. Affirm, and you'll be releasing Charlie 12, 51 to 54 bolts. The bolt will spring out when fully released. Charlie 12, 1 to 5 turns, 54 turns, sorry. Affirm. And Shane, that's right, you will be retrieving a long duration tie down tether as well. Good catch.
Okay, Jenny, I'm sure worked a little bit on my body position here. Just bear with me for a second. And that's all. Copy. You'll be installing a square scoop on the root beam micro square near Charlie 12. The handle will be facing Nader. Tomas Pesquet about to complete uh, the loosening of bolts holding the ISS rollout solar array in place on its flight support equipment.
on the scoop is not something major on uh, the micro fixture next to Charlie 12 or Charlie 6. Tapi Toma, remove your ret and translate back to the tower handrail. Also, check HAP is dry. Uh, HAP dry. Let's just think back to the tower handrail. Copy. So you put here, Toma, wait on you. Yes. As the International Space Station uh, prepares to cross the uh, northwest coast of Africa on a trajectory from northwest to southeast, Thomas Pesquet uh, has completed the loosening of bolts that has uh, held uh, the IROSA or ISS rollout solar array in place on its flight support equipment. Next up uh, for Pesquet, who's at the bottom of your screen, Shane Kimbrough at the top of your screen, will be uh, for Pesquet to set up uh, a portable foot restraint at the end of the Canadarm2 robotic arm. Shane, here comes your green PGT if you want. I'll show you. Do it somewhere. That's right, Toma, you can translate to the port CETA cart, and then we will have you give SSRMS a go when you're ready for the published APFR reconfig position. Uh, okay, copy. The port CETA cart, and uh, I give a mark in the second go arm. And I'm going to stay here and just to make sure you get cleared with your tether in mind. Okay. Before I do anything. That's a good idea. Let me know when you're clear. The view from uh, Toma Pesquet's helmet camera as he is uh, right at that flight support equipment and looking right at the ISS rollout solar array. Moments from now, uh, they'll uh, get the go-ahead uh, to begin work uh, to affix a, an articulating portable foot restraint to the end of the uh, Canadarm2 robotic arm Megan MacArthur inside the International Space Station at the controls 
of the arm from a robotics workstation. She'll be maneuvering uh, the arm into the uh, proper position for Pesque to install that foot restraint at the end of the arm. He will ultimately ride in the foot restraint at the end of the arm, holding the array that uh, will transport him and the array to the Port 6 Truss worksite, where it will be installed on a mounting bracket for its uh, unfolding and unfurling. And the view of uh, Pesquet wearing uh, the suit bearing the red stripes. You can see the uh, Canadarm 2 poised to accept uh, the installation of that uh, foot restraint. The next task on Pesquet's list of things to do uh, as he and Kimbrough work in tandem at the one hour 43 minute mark into today's spacewalk. And I will be ready for GCA to the APFR setup position. Copy, we've got a position that will move 50 centimeters space in Zenith. All right, that sounds good, and I'll drop the need more, but I'll let you know. Let's start with 50 centimeters, and you can start GCA. Copy, start GCA. And we're starting motion. And I see good motion. A good motion. Twenty-five centimeters to go. Continue motion. MacArthur operating the arm. Van de High providing uh, visual cues from inside the station as the arm uh, makes its way uh, towards where Pesquet is located. Again, uh, he soon will be installing uh, this articulating portable foot restraint to the end of the arm to serve as a uh, foot platform, a work platform, for his transport over to the P6 work site. Zenith, can you give me, I said 25 or 30, three zero centimeters station out to have a great view of the clearance right here. Copy, three zero centimeters station aft. Are you in motion? I see good motion. Happy good motion. Twenty centimeters to go. Good motion. And then Mark, you can stop motion right here. I think this is a good position. Okay, stop motion. I'll call that the uh, GCA complete. The GCA complete. Brakes are on, go for APFR reconfig. Copy, brakes on, on next work. Understand brakes on. Toma, you can ret to the APFR. You'll release it and install it with a clocking of 12. Beginning of your Shane, we still have you holding position on the FSE. We don't have any get ahead steps for you right now, so you can position to release Charlie 11 near Stanchion Delta. So that's outboard and Nader, pretty close to where you are now. And we'll just have you hold there. Copy, Jenny, I'll put over there and... Copy. Any uh, PSR is out. I've already installed the clocking of 12. Okay, the bubbles are out. The color is locked black on black. We have a quick blue and test. The clocking of 12, Jenny. 
Copy Toma. Good install. Verify APFR settings. Papa Papa Fox 6. Papa Papa Fox 6, Jenny. These are correct settings. Copy. You can release your RET and then I'll talk you through the tether swap. Lock your green tether reel and check green hook locked. Okay, my green tether reel. Green hook locked. Copy. Move yellow hook to SSRMS handrail tether point, and I'll take checks. Position is station four, 20 centimeters, and station Nader, 50 centimeters. We'll do those in series if you agree. That sounds perfect, March. Okay, if you agree, we'll call that Star QCA. Star QCA. Station 
Starting motion. Good motion. That's a good motion. And you can stop motion, that's nice. For good position, I'll call that GC complete. GC complete? Mark Vandehei uh, providing visual cues. Uh, Megan MacArthur maneuvering the arm from the robotics workstation inside the International Space Station. Thomas Pesquet at the arm, ready to uh, plant his feet in the portable foot restraint for the uh, operation to actually release the rollout solar array from its flight support equipment. So you go for that tether and to ingress the APFR. Now, uh, Shane, you should have eyes on your feather because it's going behind my back. That's where it's supposed to be, but just making sure. Do not have eyes on it. Uh, can you move a little bit? And I think you can see it. You should translate. Uh, you do, uh, sorry. You should ask. Uh, down towards the tower, I think it'll. Yeah, you can copy your last chain. You go around over towards the tower, and I think it'll help clear it. Okay. No, I'm in the APA4. That's good. Copy, Tomas. Check your tools and tethers are clear, and the ingress aid is stowed. The ingress aid is stowed. Tools and tethers are cleared. You can give SS. I do. Let your teeth just a bit. If I want just a bit, uh, Jenny. Right. Copy. Tomorrow, when you're ready, you can give SSRMS a go to maneuver. I'd like to have the change my eyes on the on the tether because it's kind of yep. kind of my back. I have eyes on now, tomorrow. Yep. Got to be about uh, two feet above you is my tether. Okay, then I'll watch it. Look good to you. That looks good right now. That was my APA file, Look, look good. That looks great. Okay. Uh, with that, uh, Mark, I am ready for the maneuver to uh, the ingress back off position. After we're putting that work, we'll give you a call when we start moving. That's great. Nice work, Shane, on P6. Oh, thanks. You too, man. You were driving some serious bolts. <laughs> Start your motion in the station forward. Copy. That's a good motion, Mark. Thanks. Hey, Mark, stop motion. Motion. Uh, my tether now is up against the first. Can you go station Mater first or not? We actually just completed the forward motion, so we can definitely go later. That would be our next step. And I'll try to bend forward as much as I can. I'm up almost with next speed. Tomas Pesquet uh, working uh, with Mark Vandehei to uh, properly position Pesquet at the uh, fine tuned orientation for. Uh, the release of the IROSA solar array. Okay, thanks. Tether are cleared. Continuing stationator. Motion to EV2. Happy, thanks. Oh, you're now clear of my tether. Thanks, Shane, for your help.
operating like a, a utility worker at the end of uh, a portable platform, Pesquet uh, at the end of the uh, Canadarm2, and the view on the right is from his helmet camera being maneuvered uh, into the proper position for the uh, release of the IROSA solar array from its flight support equipment. Yeah, manual maneuvers completed, work getting set up for the joint no pass. Copy. While we're getting configured for the joint OCAS, I'll get a glove inspection and half check from both Shane and Tomas. Jenny, uh, good gloves for me, and the half is dry. Go on EV2, dry half. Copy, good checks on EV1 and EV2. And for your awareness, we are having issues with HECA today, so I'll ask you a couple more times during the CVA, I'm sure, to power cycle and check for a green light. I'll get you both to do that now. Okay, Jenny, no problem. I have a green light now, and I'll power cycle. I call it a green light for you, one. Copy, easy one and two. And two power cycle. Copy, two. Now well, we're a switch through away from a joint cast one of one in Vern. Uh, thanks, Mark. I am ready for motion. Starting that motion. And I see good motion. Two hours into today's spacewalk, Thomas Pesquet now being maneuvered toward the solar array at the very bottom of your screen, Shane Kimbrough nearby, as he uh, monitors uh, this part of the procedure that will result in the release of the array, and then Pesquet will be maneuvered as he holds the array over to the P6 worksite. Good. Well, I'd say Shane. Okay, this is a total of two minutes in the journal cast. I don't think I told you that earlier, so I'm not sure how far into that we are. Okay, Mark, sounds good to me. Getting close to our road, so it's all good. I'll be more. Tomorrow we're setting up for a uh, manual maneuver. We are uh, in a handover period between satellites on the tracking and data relay satellite system. We'll get our downlink video and communications with the crew back momentarily. Two hours, three minutes into the spacewalk, Thomas Pesquet being maneuvered at the end of the Canadarm2 robotic arm down to the 
ISS rollout a solar array, the second of the uh, arrays being installed on the International Space Station to augment the power capability of the complex. We are ready for that maneuver to the GCA published. Okay, Mark, um, and you said 75 centimeters body in that sounds like a good published position. Start GCA. Happy, start GCA. Just started. Good motion. Five centimeters to go. In motion. And uh, Mark, you can stop motion right here. Okay, I'm making stop the motion. It's a good position. I'll call that GCA complete. GCA complete. Brakes are on. Nice Ground copies, brakes are on. Toma, attach a ret to the scoop on the inboard. I rose a micro square. Okay. Mark. Copy, we are prepping to release IROSA from the FSE. So, Tama, check your tools and tethers are clear and your ingress aid is stowed. Tools and tethers are cleared. Ingress aid is stowed. My heels are in position. The cooling is good. Uh, visor is up right now. Up when you're down. It's uh, so we're getting into the. That's right, Jay. Copy. We are going in tonight. We have two minutes and, until uh, eclipse. Okay. And that controls the IRO set for my position. Copy. And you might have said it, but to confirm your heels are secure in the APFR and your gauntlets are down. Gauntlets are down. I didn't set up things. So any of my heels are secure in the same eyes on them. Okay, copy. So now you're going to work together to release IROSA. Toma, when you are ready, you can give Shane a go to release the final FSE bolt, Charlie 11. I'll have settings for that in a moment, Shane. But a caution, prior to releasing IROSA, ensure that the FSE is not moving. And Toma, you will keep IROSA pulled toward you to keep it engaged on the pin slot interface on the FSE until you are ready to release it. Following that final bolt release, Shane, you'll be installing the square scoop 45 degrees toward Toma, and then translating to clear IROSA from the towel, tower grapple fixture. Hey, good work, Shane. Um, I like the extra of pulling IROSA down. That's what I'm doing right now. Both, and uh, Shane, I have control you. I go to the bolts of the Ebonite. I'm looking at two bolts here and just want to make sure I get on the correct one. Ready for service. Copy, you're looking for Charlie 11. It should be labeled. It's the larger bolt there. Let me know if you see it. Your settings are Bravo 3, Counter 3. I see the larger bolt does not have Charlie 11 next to it. The smaller one does. It's confusing. Checking. 20. The small one, is that the stuff block, uh, Shane? Uh, maybe, yeah, yeah. Because 
Shane Kimbrough using the uh, pistol grip tool to uh, release the last bolt holding the ISS rollout solar array in place. One of those bolts as well. We're checking on additional words for you. We have Bravo 3, counter 2 or 3? Bravo 3, counter 3. And again, your socket should only fit on one bolt. Okay. Right, Samari, ready? Uh, let me to increase my cooling and to increase my, my cooling. Just want to be sure. How many turns are we looking for, Jimmy? 24 to 26 turns. The bolt will spring out when you leave. 27. Okay. And Shane, I can see in your helmet cam that you are... You're ready to yeah. Shane. Stand down, you are not on the correct bolt. Charlie 11 should be under the guard for the Arosa blanket, so further uh, away from you. You should be able to. I'm not on any bolt here, Jerry. Okay. Just making sure that to confirm that it's the bolt with the cylinder. I'm driving. Charlie 11, the bolt should be sprung out, fully released. You can start your PGT, Shane. It's 
lot from Big My Red Out. Nice, he's dead. Do you have the Arosa? I have the Arosa. Hey, uh, scoop is installed, Jimmy. Copy, Shane. Translate to the Zenith outboard side of the FSE to assist with clearing our Rosa from the tower grapple fixture. I'm going to reposition. Copy. And that'll be to the other side of the grapple tower. Two hours, 14 minutes into the spacewalk, Pesquet and Kimbrough working uh, to release the IROSA solar array from its flight support equipment. We're just about there. That's the array when it's inside up. Back. When you're ready to release IROSA, Tama, you can slide IROSA Zenith to release it from the pin slot interface. And Shane, you'll be giving SSRMS a go for the lower IROSA back off. Again, we want your eyes on the clearance with the grapple tower. All right, Shane, you ready? I'm ready. I'm in position and I'm ready. Okay. Are you done? Feels like it's released. Catching up on my end. Yeah. I control. It's full and stable. Okay. Um, and Shane, up to you for the maneuver. Hey, uh, Mark and Megan, you have a go to back out for this. Copy. We're taking the brakes off and we're going to move uh, reference to Tomad's body axis three meters body up. Start that motion. I feel good motion. Happy. And you tell me how to uh, orient that rose out. I'm seeing good motion now. Copy. Hey, right there, Jamal. Very stable. Oh, how's the rate? Right, it's perfect, Mark. I mean, Megan's flying great. I concur. Nicely looking great. Copy. Uh, you can pitch it up a little bit. It's, 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 it
Almost two hours, 20 minutes into the spacewalk, the second IROSA rollout solar array now being extracted from its flight support equipment by Thomas Pesquet at the end of the Canadarm2 robotic arm as a visual assistance is being lended by Shane Kimbrough, who will move over to the P6 worksite at the base of the uh, far left side of the station, where this array will be installed on the opposite side from which the 2B solar array was installed this past Sunday. Started that motion. Good motion. Good motion. So I can settle in again. Yeah. Stop motion, Mark. Motion. I think it's on the spine left, like on the inboard side. Feels like there's some friction. Move it freely again. I just want to. Oh, I feel like it's catching on something. If you could. Can you uh, translate Venus and, and Luke, maybe? Look down from the Venus side of the FAT. Yeah, Jenny, you can going over to the other side. Yeah, we are. We're following along, Shane, and we agree you should go to the Venus inboard side. Check it out. I don't see anything right off the bat. Okay. I'm up on the ground or stance. There is. You maybe try to push it up a little bit, like. Okay. Okay. I, see, I see what it is now. What is it? So it's hitting the, uh, you know, where we put that tip pin in, whatever that bolt was? Uh huh. And we got the two that bolt, and now it's just being stuck there, so. Okay. You are to your right a little bit. Can you push it? A little bit. And my... Shane, you can deconflict it from that bolt. You can touch okay. the it's you can touch the bumper that uh, your left hand is close to, the white bumper that protects the blanket. Uh, I don't think it clears it. But... Yeah, Jenny. Here now? No. No? Okay. All right, to your right tomorrow. Uh, now you want to... No, I'm... I'm hitting on the other side. Can you push it to your right to my right? Now it's hitting on the other side. What I can do, though, is roll to my left. I'm going to roll it towards you. Okay. I don't know if that helps, because I don't have eyes on the problem, but... Um, yeah, I think let's try that and see. I'll roll to... towards you a little bit. Okay. Right there. Stop. Stop, okay. And, well, 
definitely help us. Mark and Megan, are you guys ready? Uh, we're ready. What direction? Um, the standard direction of going um, whatever. Before. Whatever you're doing before that way. Okay, copy. We got a couple. Uh, we got a couple more meters to go. Sorry, that motion. Hey, Mark, I'm gonna go like 20 centimeters, and I'll stop you, probably. Okay, we'll go 20 centimeters and check in. My roll to your left. Mark and Megan. We start the motion. We are following along. We suggest you might be able to move Nader, and hopefully the bolt could clear the gap. Oh, looks like you did it. There you go. Well done, Shane. It's free now, Jenny. It's free right. now. Okay. Okay, uh, Mark, ready for you to resume. Jenny, only stay here. Go to the other side. Shane, Shane can, can you see the tower? No, I cannot see it. Probably need to go back over there, right? Yeah, if you... Yeah, we're holding place until you give us a go that you've got good uh, clearance views. Shane, we want you... Shane, we're happy with the clearance to the bolt, so we want you by the tower to view that clearance during the motion. Two hours, 27 minutes into the uh, spacewalk, Thomas Pesquet uh, carefully uh, removing the Irosa solar array from its flight support equipment. Very tight tolerances to get it out of the uh, flight support equipment uh, area uh, under the uh, watchful eye of Shane Kimbrough, who's alongside. We're uh, in between uh, satellites on our tracking and data relay satellite system. We'll get a downlink television and uh, communications capability back from the station just momentarily. Everything uh, continuing to proceed uh, fairly close to the timeline for Pesquet and Kimbrough. Spacewalk that began at 6.52 a.m. Central Time, 7.52 a.m. Eastern Time. Looking good over here. Motion. Tomorrow you have it. It's free. Good. Here's me. Our clients is good. Happy. Are you clear of the stances on the left if you want to yell out to your left a little bit? I require it. Okay, move it up to my left. Looks good. Happy. Switch it up.
looking good. Our clearance is good. I see that you've cleared the tower and the FSC. Copy, Shay. Nice work. Thanks for all the help. Copy. Toma Pesque now in firm control of the uh, IROSA solar array. It is now out of its flight support equipment structure. Shane Kimbrough will move over to the P6 truss worksite to receive a handoff of the array from Pesque once Pesque is maneuvered over to that location by astronaut Megan MacArthur operating the Canadarm2 robotic arm from her uh, robotic workstation inside the International Space Station. Motion is stopped. We're set up for a joint LCAS. Copy. Ready for motion. Mark. Shane, you can perform a socket swap to the 582 inch socket on your PGT. That's in work.
Well, we're one switch to away from a joint OCAS. It's the first of three. This one will take two minutes in Vern. Copy more. Do I got information? Then uh, I am ready for motion. Starting the motion. And that's good motion. Nice motion. Good full pass on the 12 inch on the socket caddy. Copy. Now we're set up for the second OCAS. Focus on the two links on my PD. Shane, after you stow your PGT, you'll be retrieving Tomas green hook from the port seat of cart. Uh, okay, Mark, I copy. I'm ready for your second joint all cast. All right, that's from the arm motion. Mark, um, I don't have visual references anymore, so if you can give me a heads up when the motion up so that I can control and prepare the Arosa. Yeah, we'll, that, we'll give you, uh, I will, I'll tell you when the most, when the, uh, we start ramping out. Yeah. Great, thanks. And Toma, just for your awareness, some of these maneuvers will bring you close to the 2A solar array. It'll be on your left side. We understand you're in the dark right now, but if you do see it, we don't want it to surprise you. We have good clearance from the ground, and so do M1 and M2 from their procedure. Good. Thank you. Thanks for your heads up. I appreciate it. And we're starting to wrap out. Thank you, Mark.
chain when you pick up Tomas' green hook, make sure you attach it to your waist tether or D-ring extender or green reel. Okay, copy that. It's a lot of that motion's complete. We're setting up, setting up the third journal cast. Yep. Thanks, Mark. Your call was great. Uh, I could uh, nicely control the arrow sign. I'm ready for the third of eight. I got some miles green hook in my left D ring. Copy, Shane. Check reel unlocked. Uh, it was unlocked. Copy. Translate to P6 for a green hook location. Check gauntlets in place prior to crossing the Sarge. I'll check it right now. Tomorrow we are one switch from a third of three joint OCASs. This one's going to be one minute long in burn. Okay, I'm ready for motion. Motion. We copy your check, Shane. Wrapping out. Copy. All right, and I see the floor array. Or is my feet to bring it forward? And that mission is complete. Copy. Let's work. Now we're setting up a manual maneuver. It'll be a uh, GTA. GTA from Shane, I guess. Shane, you're looking for handrail 5311 for Tomas Green Hook and 5388 for yours. After that, thanks, Jimmy. Headed into insulation in one minute. Tomaz is on 5-3-1-1. Good words. 
Houston Station on one. We're standing by for your go for the Arosa handoff maneuver. I'm on uh, 538832. Copy, check both reels unlocked. And station on one, big picture, we're just uh, waiting for Shane to get in position and uh, get a little better lighting, then we'll give you the go. And uh, also, we copy this is going to be a GCA, so we got to wait for those air calls as well. With the road mark, Terry. Copy, reels unlocked. You're translating to handrail 5344. Outboard of your APFR. We'll put in a fair lead there. This is Mission Control Houston. Two hours, 45 minutes into the uh, spacewalk, Thomas Pesquet has been maneuvered to the P6 worksite near the uh, base of the mast canister for the large legacy or heritage solar arrays that you see uh, in the field of view. Those arrays delivered years ago on the STS-97 mission to the International Space Station, the first pair of original solar arrays for station power. Shane Kimbrough is uh, about uh, to move into a portable foot restraint at the work site to take a handoff of the IROSA or ISS rollout solar array from uh, Pesquet, who transported that array out of the flight support equipment on the truss and was maneuvered by astronaut Megan MacArthur at the end of the Canadarm2 robotic arm to join Kimbrough at the work site to which this array will be installed on a mounting bracket for its unfolding and unfurling, joining another rollout solar array that was installed for the 2B power channel of the station back on Sunday. This array in play today is for the 4B power channel. Hey Jenny, what's the uh, handrail for the... 5346. Uh, early? Yes, Good words. Verify APFR settings, Fox 7. Well, black on black. This test, good pull test. The uh, 12 o'clock, Fox Fox. Seven. Good settings. You can ingress the APFR and then we'll perform your checks prior to the handoff maneuver. I got a set seven. And there you go.
Shane Kimbrough looking down at the Earth from 255 miles up as the International Space Station flies from southwest to northeast, entering an orbital sunrise over the Pacific Ocean. Uh, it's all set up, Jimmy, and you're now, all right? You can ingress, Shane. Kimbro about uh, to position his feet in a portable foot restraint to accept a handoff of the uh, rollout solar array from Thomas Pesquet. As we take uh, questions on hashtag Ask NASA, a Twitter user asks, uh, does uh, Tomas simply put his feet in the foot restraint and they are secure, or does he use something else to secure them? No, he simply slips his feet into the foot restraint. He is tethered to other structures at the same time to make sure he is uh, securely fastened, but uh, it's simply uh, putting feet in a foot restraint, uh, slipping those feet in to the foot restraint, which is attached to the various structures uh, at the work sites. Another uh, Twitter user, Wayne, asks, is the rollout solar array that was deployed last week actually supplying power to the International Space Station? The answer is yes. It is up and running in perfect fashion, supplying about 20 kilowatts of power, as will all the other solar arrays. Shane, now that you're in the APFR, check your tools and tethers are clear and your ingress aid is stowed. Hey, tools and tethers are clear. I just cleared my safety tether a little bit. Ingress aid is stowed. Check your visor glove heaters cooling are set. Your heels are secure, and your gauntlets are down. Advisor, glove heaters, set. Um, glove heaters are off. Are you all standing? I'm sorry. Heels are secure, and gauntlets down. Gauntlets are down. Spacewalk communicator Jenny Sidey providing Shane Kimbrough with instructions as he moves into a portable foot restraint to accept a handoff of the ISS rollout solar array from Thomas Pesquet, the International Space Station about to cross the west coast of Canada, flying just north of Vancouver. Copy, Mark and Megan, I'm ready for the GCA. All right, Shane, great. That GCA will be relative to Thomas' body frame. will be two meters body in. How does that sound? That sounds good. I'm ready. Okay, we'll, we'll call that start GCA. Starting motion. That's a good motion. Happy good motion. And a good view of the uh, second of the uh, six rollout solar arrays to be installed on the International Space Station. Currently being held by Thomas Pesquet, about to hand them off to Shane Kimbrough. Here in Mission Control, uh, the spacewalk being uh, supervised by Flight Director Pooja Jasrani. On the right of your screen, uh, seated uh, in the white jacket, 
his spacewalk communicator Jenny Seide, Canadian Space Agency astronaut, and to her right is veteran NASA astronaut Drew Feustel. Zero seven years to go. Copy. Twenty five centimeters. How's that look? That looks great. Stop motion, GCA complete. Copy, GCA complete. Brakes are on. Go for our Rosa handoff. Let me get a red on it. All right. Tomorrow, I can only reach one handle from this location, so we'll, we'll work together. I can be oriented, but as soon as uh, as long as you let me know, they can put a handle on it. Handle it and... Okay, I have a red on it now. Okay. I feel you're taking control. I don't have control yet, but right. I get to the second hand now. Um, roll it to your left. Roll it to my left. That's... Okay. What? I think that's good right there. Okay, let, it, let it settle. Let Okay. Now, so you can let go for a second. Let me reorient it a little bit. Okay, so I'm letting go of one hand. I still have one hand on it. Oh, here. Is that good for you? Almost. Yeah. I have control. Okay, you have control. Or at least by that. So I'm not taking motion to the Rosa, because I have a big moment on here. I move it. Okay. All right, my rent is, you have a rent on it, right, Shane? Thanks. Okay, my rent is released. I have control, and it is nice and stable. 
So you're pitching down a bit. I guess that's fine. Ground copies all. With a good handoff, when you're ready to ma, you can give SSRMS a go to maneuver to the back off position. You're still pitching down, Shen, right? Left control. Can you get me? I'm hearing you, Tamar. Yeah. Uh, you, you're pitching down, right? You're aware? I, I try to pitch up to back there, but uh, is it? Uh, it's, still, it's pitching down. As soon as I let go of my hand, it's pitching down. I mean, down here. I see it's pitching down. Do you want me to bring it back up? Uh, it just seems like a good position right now. Yeah, but it's, as soon as I let go, it takes quite a rate. Yeah. Shane Kimbrough and firm uh, control of the uh, IROSA solar array. Tomah Pesquet being backed away from uh, that location. He will uh, get out of uh, the foot restraint and then join uh, Kimbrough back at the P6 truss worksite to begin the process of uh, mounting the array onto the uh, mod kit or mounting bracket that's at the base of the P6 solar arrays where the integrated electronics assembly is located. Tomorrow we're setting up for the first of two joint gases. Right, Bach. Sounds good. I'm ready for motion.
Bob, this is the first of two joint old castles where one switch throw away. It'll be in course, 2.5 minutes. Okay. I am ready for motion. Sorry, motion. We haven't started that motion yet. Okay. Now we're starting motion. All right. And I feel good motion. Happy. Station Houston, space ground for everybody. Big picture on uh, what's next. So we're currently at EVA PET of just over three hours. Our working eco start is in about 37 minutes. We see the limiting consumable is EV2 battery of 753. Our plan when we get back to the egress position is after the tether swap, we're going to actually pull the APFR off the SSRMS and stick it in a nearby whiff, and we believe that's going to save us time uh, on the other end and protect us in case we get into that third eclipse of the day. So we're looking to save some time on the other end. And uh, that's the big picture for now. How copy? We want copies. Two copies. Two copies. That's the first journal cast is complete, set up for number two. Copy, ready. And uh, Jenny, I think I still know down to practice at the right. Uh, defense is engaged, shooting up from the bouncing bracket from ICS. I okay. can hold for later when we get to it. Yep, we copied Tomas, and we were expecting that. Uh, okay. Tomorrow, we're switched on away from the second of two joint casters. This one's in course, two minutes. Copy, Mark, ready. Sorry, that motion. Hey, Drew, where's Tomorrow taking that APFR? Sorry, I'm not. Sorry, Shane, say again. Drew, call down, said you're going to move the APFR somewhere. Yeah, I'll, I'll copy that. Drew, where are you going? I don't know. It's sitting there with nearby, but there are more words, I guess. I have words on that if you want it now, Tomorrow. I'm on now. Thanks. You'll be doing the tether swap, and then when you remove the APFR, you'll be stowing it in width 13, which will be on your left. It is on the A frame. There will also be a width right in front of you, but we do not want to use that width as it's right in the way of the translation path coming in board. Here we go. 
reading my mind or Jenny. Okay, that sounds good. I see the reef 13 on the A-frame. The left of uh, Andrea 5311 while well, I'll do the tether swap. And I was looking at the one that would put the APFR in the way. So good call there. All good words. And uh, to confirm, you also will not need to change any of the settings on the APFR. When you stow it in with 13, your clocking will be 6. I'll give that to you again later. And that second internal cast is complete. We're setting up a manual maneuver and it'll be a GCA. Copy, Mark. I'm ready for GCA. You have it published? We do. We're still setting up, but it will be four meters body in. That sounds exactly right. Prior to GCA, Tomah, could you reset your HECA and check green light? I have green light now. Off. I call him with a green light. Copy, thanks. So, Ma, we're ready for the start GCA call. All right, the start GCA mark. Uh, starting GCA, four meters body in. Motion started. Uh, see you. Did you say good motion? I did say good motion. Pretty good motion. Three meters to go. Emotion. We've got uh, two meters to go. Can you see that trending pin? I see that trending pin. It's uh, my left a little bit lower. I have a good vision. Clearance vision. Copy, good clearance. This is Mission Control Houston, three hours, 13 minutes into the spacewalk. A good view of the uh, IROSA solar array, the ISS roll up rollout solar array, the second of the two such arrays being installed uh, on the International Space Station. It's in the grasp of uh, Shane Kimbrough. We had a view from uh, his HD uh, camera for a moment. Now you're looking at Thomas Pesquet being moved uh, back uh, to a position where he will get out of the foot restraint at the end of the Canadarm2. He transported the array over to hand off to Kimbrough after the array was released from its flight support equipment on the truss of the station. Pesquet will join Kimbrough back at the P6 truss worksite for the installation of that array on a mounting bracket at the base of the mast canister that uh, houses the legacy or heritage, the original 
uh, solar arrays for the P6 truss, to which uh, this second uh, rollout solar array is being attached to join uh, the first such array that was installed this past Sunday. Five. And that's whole position. How is that looking, Tomah? It's looking fantastic. It is uh, great motion. Can you stay complete? Stay complete. Brakes are on. Go for ATFR egress. Copy. Brakes are on. Ground copy. Okay. I am ready for my ATFR egress. Okay. With your waist tether down on handrail 5311, check the gate is closed and locked. And my right waist tether down on 5311, and the gate is closed and locked. Copy. You can egress the APFR, and then we'll GCA if required in order to access your yellow hook and the APFR. Uh, yeah, it'd be nice to have kind of 50 centimeters station forward, possible, or that towards body up if we were in internal coordinates before. Yep, we copied uh, five zero centimeters, uh, APFR boot plate up or a body up if you're in your old reference frame. Does yeah. that make sense? That sounds good. That's perfect, Mark. Okay, are you clear for us to start that GCA? Yeah, I'm, uh, I've actually um, had a hand on the, the finger state to keep it away from me. I uh, can go for a GCA. Okay, we're going to ramp this in slowly, starting with motion. And that's to start GCA. Yeah, start GCA. With Megan MacArthur at the controls of the Canadarm2 robotic arm, Mark Vandehei providing visual cues alongside of her uh, in the uh, International Space Station at the robotics workstation. The uh, robotic arm being backed away from Thomas Pesquet now that he's out of the foot restraint. He soon will be joining Shane Kimbrough back at the P6 worksite. Uh, Kimbrough with a firm grasp on the ISS solar array, the rollout solar array, the second of six such rollout solar arrays. Good view of those arrays right now that will be installed on a mounting bracket unfolded and unfurled for the 4B power channel on the P6 truss of the International Space Station. For now, but I'll go too far. Okay, so we haven't we haven't stopped the GCA yet, unless you say it's not uh, GCA complete. No, I think GCA complete for now. GCA complete. Make sure on that we think you're go for the APFR adjustments. Okay. Um. Tomah will complete our tether swap first. Yeah, I copy. The International Space Station is flying 255 miles over the Atlantic Ocean, midway th uh, between the east coast of South America and the west coast of Africa. This is my um, left way feather on the handrail 5232. Jenny, the gate is closed and locked. And then I'll pick back up the one I have up here. Copy. Um, and the. Uh, Release. I'm ready for your words on the, the swap. Release your yellow hook from the SSRMS and attach it to your green reel. Oh, that's hard.
Yeah, I think I need a uh, 1230s uh, centimeters uh, body in based on my previous uh, position. Okay, Megan. Copy, we can do that. Uh, 20 centimeters boot plate in. That's right. And you have the clearances there. I have the clearances. Okay, with that, we'll call it a start GCA. Start GCA. Starting GCA and starting motion. Good motion. Happy good motion. Time to go. And that's the 20 centimeters you asked for Tomar. How's that look? Yeah, that looks good. Thank you. So you call that GCA complete? That's GCA complete. Thanks, Your Honor. That's your brakes are on. Ground copies, brakes on. And my yellow hoop, Jenny, on uh, green reel. Uh, locked black on black, and the real both reels are unlocked. Copy. That is a good tether config. You can ret to the APFR and remove it from the arm. My waist is on the APFR, Jenny, that's fine. That's fine, Toma. Remove the APFR and install it in WIF 13 with a clocking of six. We copy Tomas. Before you out, um, you said we 13. A firm, it should be on the A frame near your left hand. We're looking for a clocking of six.
Good APFR install, Tama. Check your tools and tethers are clear from the arm, and you can remove your tether to the APFR. Approaching the uh, three and a half hour mark in the uh, spacewalk today by Pesquet and Kimbrough, a good view of Toma Pesquet, EV1 or extravehicular crew member number one wearing the suit with the red stripes. He is uh, stowing the foot restraint that was affixed to the end of the Canadarm2 robotic arm that he placed his feet into to ride the arm, carrying the ISS rollout solar array to the Port 6 truss worksite where uh, Shane Kimbrough is patiently waiting for Pesquet to join him to install uh, the array that you see here in the field of view from uh, Kimbrough's helmet camera with the earth below. That uh, array will be mounted onto a uh, mod kit, as it's called, basically a mounting bracket at the base of the Port 6 truss structure. Then uh, electronic uh, cables uh, will be hooked up uh, to join the new array to the integrated electronics assembly for the 2B, uh, for the 4B power channel, in this case, the 2B power channel received the first new solar array this past Sunday. The crew then uh, will uh, be using a pistol grip tool to disengage a series of bolts to enable uh, the array to be unfolded and unfurled and tensioned so that it can uh, begin to draw electricity during daylight passes of the Earth. Each of these new arrays will uh, be capable of producing about 20 kilowatts of electricity to augment uh, the current uh, power output of the station's older solar arrays. In all, six of the eight power channels on the station will receive arrays, those power channels drawing the greatest loads or the greatest requirements for electrical consumption for payloads and other hardware that they are uh, associated with. The uh, technology from these rollout solar arrays that are being installed on the space station is also going to be used in the Gateway program in lunar orbit. The Gateway uh, is an outpost under development that will orbit the moon, providing support for a long-term human return to the lunar surface and a staging point for deep space exploration. The uh, arrays uh, to be uh, used for the Gateway program are, uh, and particularly for the uh, power and propulsion element of Gateway, uh, will be a bit larger than the uh, rollout solar arrays being installed on the space station. Uh, a single uh, IROSA or uh, station rollout solar array measures 60 feet by 15 feet, while uh, the uh, solar array wing contemplated for Gateway will be 60 feet in length and 32 feet wide. The uh, two arrays uh, to be installed on the power and propulsion element of Gateway in the future will produce about 60 kilowatts of power. Gateway to use the power to move around the moon while performing lunar exploration tasks, technology demonstrations, and other experiments. The incremental yaw is this like a setting of two. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, Shane, you ready? Ready. Okay. Uh, so it's going to be to your left. Correct. And here's your first click. You're in the click now. That's six. Hey, how's my orientation of this? Orientation in terms of. Yeah, I go on the structure over there to my left. Are we good? Yeah, we're good, but you'll have to pitch up a lot when we get to the end. You got to be 60 degrees of pitch. Put somewhere there now, real quick. Yeah. Looking better? Yeah, looking better, but that's, you're going to need more. But. I'm going to wrap that out, though, and then I'll let you go ahead. Okay. Yeah, ready? Ready? All right, there's... Okay. 
and click right. you're out of six going down to five I'm gonna click in five and I'll tell you click in five Check it out Search. Come on, I'm ready for the next year. Okay. Out of five, going to four. Out of work, too. Taking <laughs> four. Are we looking at structure? Need uh, 40 degrees of pitch or 30 degrees of pitch at least. Better? Yeah, better. Um, yep. Ready when you are. Okay, ready for one more click. and we copy the clearance of Irosa to structure. Well done. Tama, ensure that Shane's tether is clear for his egress later. Uh, I'll go under the uh, EAP4. Uh, You're translating to handrail 5360, outboard of your APFR. And pitch up. Um, I'll see you oh, you have a tendency to pitch down. Yeah. Up 5360, Jenny. Hey, firm, you'll be fair leading your safety tether on 5356, just Nader of 60. F3, F3, 5, 6, C.
three hours, 35 minutes into the uh, spacewalk, Thomas Pesquet, as you can see uh, from this view from his helmet camera, moving into position to join Kimbro at the uh, P6 worksite, where he will take a handoff of the array back from Kimbro, now that he has uh, stowed uh, the uh, one of two articulating uh, portable foot restraints in play uh, for today's spacewalk. Once that uh, second handoff is completed, the crew uh, will then uh, receive instructions from the ground uh, IV or spacewalk communicator, Jenny Seide of the Canadian Space Agency, uh, to begin work uh, to install the rollout solar array to a mounting bracket at the base of the P6 array for the 4B power channel. After the handover, repeat your last. Looks right. Yeah. Looks, looks right. Twelve India, India, first start eleven, Jenny. We want to confirm settings of Fox Eleven. Yes, yeah. twelve India, India, Fox Eleven, Jenny. Okay, copy. We're caught up, Toma. You can ingress the APFR, then we'll do our checks. Then you have to draw the arrows at your left if you can. Mind the clearance between your helmet and the arrows of blanket. I see it, Jenny. I'm doing my best. Understood. Ensure tools, tethers clear, ingress aid stowed. Yeah, hold on, good. We are two minutes until eclipse. Set your visor, glove heaters cooling. All good, Jenny. Thanks. Heel secure in the APFR and gauntlets are down. Okay, heel secure and gauntlets are down. Okay, with that, you can work together to transfer control of IROSA. Keep in mind, you'll be performing a RET swap, and it's important, Toma, that the RET goes on the scoop in your left hand. So left scoop. Okay, that makes sense. And, um, <clears throat> Jane, if you're ready, um, can you get it up from your position? Not uh, much authority there. Up, good job. All right, man. Yeah, I didn't copy your last shit, but... I'm trying. I don't have much authority, but... Oh, okay. If you bring it up a little bit, then I can help. Right now, we have the blankets, but... 
There you go. Okay. I'm okay. helping you with the up. Okay. You hold it there. Okay. A set of reds. I'm going to Yeah, the red on the scoop, I have a hand on the scoop. Um, okay, I have control, but I'm, I'm sideways, so... Yeah, no, I like you have control. Well, I know, stand by. So I'm, I'm, uh, I'm more than 90 degrees um, sideways, so I'm going to have to rotate the whole arrow also 90 degrees. Um, I'm going to need you to initiate that motion very slowly once you let go, and then uh, I'll try to stop it. That makes sense? Alright. Watch you. Okay. Alright. I, I, I have an art time here and you're saying you're breaking off all the time. Yeah, say, say again what you want. So I want you to... Do you remember the final position? Yeah. So I need your end to rotate. The left shoulder axis of rotation is my end. Does that make sense? Yeah. That release with the... You have control, you have control right? I have control. I'm going to let go. Yeah. I'll get my red off. Okay. I have to be very stable in pitch. And, and I just need a little bit of your. You have a hand on it? I have two hands on it, but on the same scoop. Are you helping? You'll have to, you'll have to push it. That's what I'm trying to do. Good, y'all. I don't see y'all. And if push it and let go is what I mean, Shane, right? Gotcha, okay. Thank you, man. Very slowly. Yeah, yeah that sounds, that looks good. Better? Yeah, yes. If I can control that. Have it? Have it. And then I'll let go and get out of here. Well done, Tama and Shane. Shane, understand you're egressing the APFR. You can release your fair lead and head to the mod kit. I try to have good control here. Very good. Big going very, very slowly. Bring it home. Yep. I'm going to set up and get my uh, fairly lead off and off. Ground copies.
EV crew, uh, warning and caution for you while Jenny's taking a quick break. Uh, when on the aft side of the mod kit, on the outboard side, avoid contacting the legacy blanket boxes and protruding trunnions. And a caution, while both crew are working on the mod kit, crew must not simultaneously impart loads into the mod kit. That's translation on folding IROSA, bolt ops, connector ops, or cable routing. Sudden stops and quick grabs are not allowed on the mod kit. 30 pounds max lateral load on mod kit during and after IROSA soft capture. Hey, Drew. Hey, hey Drew. Don't to let the fly on the mod kit. I'm in a good position now, same. Push. And we'll come over to and Shane, uh, for you, uh, you're translating around the left side of the mounting bracket. Don't forget the fair lead around the IEA corner on handrails 5336 and 5340. And then I'll put a rich man fair lead. Copy that. Sounds good. Shane, we see you trend. On the left side of the bracket, if the we copy. we copy, Shane. We need you to check the left soft capture features are armed and down. We're going to work to install IROSA on the mounting bracket. Make sure the bottom of the root beam is aligned with the mounting bracket alignment features prior to installing. And caution, confirm no BGA motion prior to installing IROSA on the mounting bracket. Shane, you can maintain control of IROSA, assisting Tomah as he uses the adjustable equipment tether hook, the long side, which is stowed on the mounting bracket scoop, to tether to and remove the scoop in his right hand.
Uh, so it's, it's too far, Jenny. It's too far. It's in my back. I don't think I can do that. Mm -hmm. The expected change you could maybe you have to build the ATFR. I'm sorry, but that's a lot. I have a hand around tomorrow. I have a hand around. Can I bring it towards you tomorrow? Uh, if you if you have control, then I can yell myself. I have control. Okay, you have control. Okay. And one hand on it. Yeah, the red is pulling it towards me. They both. This is Mission Control Houston as we approach the four-hour mark into uh, today's spacewalk. Thomas Pesquet and Shane Kimbrough in the uh, third spacewalk in the sequence currently underway to install the first two ISS rollout solar arrays onto the P6 tr uh, truss structure for that uh, portion of the integrated electronics assembly for the International Space Station. These arrays to augment the current power output of the station's systems. The uh, two uh, spacewalkers are in the process, the early stage of installing this second rollout solar array to a mounting bracket at the base of the P6 truss. After which uh, it will uh, be unfolded, maneuvered into place, to alignment guides, hopefully uh, without much trouble, and then to uh, have electrical connections made through a series of cables pre-staged by Shane Kimbrough earlier in today's spacewalk. Yeah, but it, it's something he's pulling on it, because it's cable and something goes pitch down really fast. I'm trying to hold it down on my end, right? But don't pull it so that it pitches. That is too much. This is... That's too much. It, it, it's making it pitch down and it's not a line. It's your end down? You have, to, you have to bring it up on your end. Sure. There you go. More. 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 More up? Yeah. There you go. Okay. Now, how does it look like uh, sideways? It comes to you just about 10 seconds. Yeah. One, that's lined up. Lined up? Yep. Do you want to go in? Yep. Okay, where is stable? Pitching up on your side. Maybe three. Two. One. What's going on? It's there in the hole. It's in? Yeah, it's just not getting all the way. No, it's not, it's not in on my side. The hole on your side now. Yep. That's another angle. There, there, we there we go. Not in on your side, though. Okay. It's, okay. it's only the angle. You're still lining it. Like in the... Uh, So you're 
read and slept. Control for a second, I'm going to read that path control. All right, I'm in. I'm in, too. Very much. The, the defense engaged. Shane, you're coming across broken. Yeah, it's checking the, the, the defense are engaged. Lineman guys are engaged both uh, left and center, and we're checking the defense. Copy. I'll take a minute, Jenny. The A frame gets in the way. It's a bit more exciting, a bit more challenging than the B frame. Mm -hmm. To confirm, you have both alignment features and both soft capture features on the left side. Oh, negative, Jenny. But, uh, we have both alignment features and we are checking the test, the soft captures. That's what we're doing right now. Copy, we're with you. Okay, both the uh, uh, sub, sub capture pens are in center and left. Correct. The alignment guys are in center and left. Copy, we understand. Well done, you two. Tomai, you can release your RET and you'll be using the adjustable equipment hook on the mounting bracket scoop to attach to the scoop, which is in your left hand. Shane, you will be connecting the adjustable equipment tethers, which you pre-staged, to the left side of IROSA. Okay. Back around the street. <laughs> Jenny, the AT from the melting bracket scoop is now on the left scoop, and I'm going to go ahead and release the left scoop and go back to the bag. Good words. This is Mission Control Houston. We have hit the four-hour mark into uh, today's spacewalk by Thomas Pesquet and Shane Kimbrough. They have uh, mounted uh, the uh, IROSA uh, array, the ISS rollout solar array for the 4B power channel of the International Space Station and have achieved a soft capture onto the mounting bracket at the base of the Port 6 truss structure of the International Outpost. With that uh, having been completed, the next step will be for Pesquet to use a pistol grip tool to release a final hinge restraint called the inner hinge launch restraint on the array. That will be the precursor to the unfolding of the array, hopefully uh, with less trouble than uh, was uh, experienced uh, with a structural interference on the first spacewalk conducted nine days ago. On, on that occasion, uh, for the first of these two arrays, a structural interference uh, resulted in uh, the array being uh, refolded into place, 
A series of troubleshooting steps were implemented uh, to enable Pesquet and Kimbrough to unfold and unfurl that array successfully this past Sunday in the second spacewalk they've conducted. Equipment tethers to the left side of IROSA. Following that, we'll be able to release the final hinge restraint bolt R6. So you can ready your PGT. The timing of uh, today's operation requires uh, the International Space Station to be uh, orbiting in darkness or eclipse uh, at the time that electrical connections are made so that uh, we don't uh, have power flowing through the integrated electronics assembly while those connections are being hooked up uh, for the new array to the electronics assembly. We're 15 minutes into this current night pass of the International Space Station. Flight Director Pooja Jesrani has informed uh, the team here that we will not get to those electrical, conne electrical connections during this pass and we'll uh, wait until the next night pass to begin that work pending uh, the other activities uh, that will precede that, including the unfolding and securing of the uh, array in an un unfolded uh, alignment configuration. ...releases the final hinge restraint bolt, R6. Tomas, stand by for settings until she's in position. I can set now and I won't drive until she's in position. Very interesting. Tomai, your settings are Bravo 2, counter 2, waiting on Shane's position. Bravo 2, counter 2, I don't understand, I have to wait for Shane. Good words. Oh. Hey, Tomai, I'm ready whenever you are. Okay. Tomah, you're releasing R6. How many times do I need you to infect? You're releasing R6, 18 to 20 turns. The bolt will pop out. 18 to 20 turns. R6. Then you have uh, 19 curves and the bolt popped out, fully released. Copy, Tama, 19 turns, R6 is released. You can stow your PGT and egress the APFR. Great position. Am I releasing it? Open it up. What? Can I open it up? Uh, there's a scoop in the way. Well, I'm back with you after the handover. So my your next step is to relocate the APFR. Uh, are we not opening a rosa first? No, your next, your next step is 